Hi guys and welcome to this watercolor painting tutorial. In this painting tutorial I want to talk about how I paint my portraits and what I do and how I prepare to make a beautiful drawing and painting as best as I can. And to start off I begin with a sketch in my sketchbook to get the rough shapes of the portrait I'm doing, the facial expressions and the overall features that make this face interesting and special and why I wanted to paint it in the first place. Because I, like in most of my artworks, I discovered the uh, model on Instagram and in this a uh, quick Photoshop footage you see how I just thought the uh, photo would look even better if I add a flower crown to the model. Like I just said I found the model on Instagram it is Jennifer Broders such a beautiful face and just an incredible beautiful model. I have the account down in the description and also the account of the photographer. And what I do then is that I trace the reference onto my paper and I just work out the interesting things that I explored in my sketch before. And I usually have the sketch next to the paper so that I can compare it all the time. And with this painting I actually had to start over again because this really happens pretty often that I start with watercolors and I screw up the colors. In this case I painted two dull and too dark and I wanted to have a beautiful pastel like palette so I had to start over again and this is um, a habit that I can highly recommend for every artist out there because nothing is more frustrating and exhausting than finishing a painting that is had not the best start and you know that you screwed up some part of it and, yet, and you're just trying to save it. It's definitely better for me at least to start over new and paint the same motive three or four times until I get it right and then the satisfaction is just the best. I succeeded to make this difficult motive and this motivates me for my future painting. Oh and if you oh, this video is about 12 minutes long I have a 30 minutes long video about this where I talk more about my technique um, on my Patreon page available. If you're interested in this just head over there. And so back to the painting. Before I start the face I lay down all the important colors on the paper and in this with this painting I wanted to stay in a pastel range of colors and I looked at the blacks of my reference photo and I detected some brown browns in there so I decided that my blacks because I wanted to paint in pastel tone there are no blacks I decided to make them in a warm beautiful brown tone to balance out the cool tones of her hair color and like in all of my other watercolor paintings I start up with building up from the darker tones to the lighter tones and like I said for the dark tones I use a black and brown tone and I also had to paint a bit more saturated than on my reference because this watercolor paper which is ha from Hahnemühle tends to dull the col colors a bit so I had to paint a little bit more vibrant than the reference was and I after I established all the major areas in this painting and all the pastel tones I concentrated on the expression expression on her face because the face is the focal point of this painting and I wanted to be the expression that the model has that thing that caught my interest in the first place it was that she reminded me a bit of Anne Hathaway because of those eyes that tend to descend or drop at the edges and this is a really rare rare thing to find in faces and as an artist I of course um, <laughs> notice like these specific interesting facial features and I find it extremely exciting to 
paint the different ways on how we perceive beauty and what we find beautiful on a face and that is why I paint so many different models from Instagram because I'm I would be bored if I would only paint one specific face and beauty ideal I love to explore different shapes of eyes of lips of of cheekbones of chins of faces of hairs and this i could do it forever and just try out all those different um, forms and shapes and now i get back on my technique here i'm after i established all the darker areas on her face i continued with my color pencils part and for that i'm using more colors that i actually see in the reference the reference is rather pale in skin colors it is all more grayish and a whitish skin tone which is very beautiful but on a on a watercolor painting um, it, it was, would just be white and or gray and this wouldn't look very interesting. So what I did is that I get all my favorite color pencils for skin tones and these are polychromos and the tones I use are turquoise, yellow, ochre and rose tones. And I place them all more or less randomly as if they would f flicker on her skin because that is what, what normal skin does as well. If you um, look close to a photo reference, you see that the skin has so many different colors. And I use this trick to just make the skin a look a little bit more real and interesting and as if there would be a real blood veins going through them under the surface and just to make it look more lively this this is why i use those different colors and i also pay attention that i use them next to each other so for example i use a yellow then i use a turquoise then i use a little bit of pink and rose and i alternate the colors so that i don't have one area completely turquoise or red or rose that would wouldn't look wouldn't have the effect i intended to and my trick number one to get a smooth surface as of course as probably many of you have um know it already because you've watched my other watercolor videos is that i have my luminance pencils the luminance pencils are the only way for me i haven't figured out a different technique to get an area smooth that i previously cross hatched with polychromos for example and i did i um, make a complete layer of white luminance over her skin and her face and for the dark darker parts and the shadows i use a grayish and a warm skin tonish color for that so that i don't have to go with white over the dark shadows that would make the shadows look gray and it wouldn't have a shadow effect and for the hair the best method for this hair for me was that I placed a bluish first layer and then I worked with my luminance white pencil into this layer and placed the hair strings into it and just worked them out and shaped them and this is a pretty meditative way which could go forever but I decided to just uh, paint some hair strings and not every one of them and here um, where you just saw the flower crown close up you also saw that I used a black in pen to just add some loose lines around the flower crown because I found this very beautiful and it is something new that I haven't tried out before um I only did cross hatchings but I wanted to add some loose lines because they would fit so perfectly to the messy foliage of the crown I also added of course my favorite part this is the glitter and and adding glitter totally reminds me of my very very early childhood days uh, which I spent often with my grandma and she gave me those little stickers or just collectible paper like stickers but they but they didn't um, stick so they were like pictures and they had a lot of glitter so it is it when I add those glitter I oftentimes have to think about that and um, it takes me back into those wonderful um, early and beautiful years 
uh, of my childhood. So, and this painting is almost finished. Normally I don't do anything after I place my layer of glitter, but then I thought I will add those foliage in the background and I um, use my uh, brush for watercolor, which is at the moment already spread out because I use it for oil painting and it hasn't um, the shape it has when it was new, but it is still great for making those rough shapes for foliage. And so this is a painting and I really liked how she turned out in the end and I'm super happy with the result and I'm looking forward to make more of those watercolor illustrations. She is my $95 reward for my patrons. If you're also interested in getting a watercolor illustration of this kind, um, head over and pledge the $95 reward. The painting is randomly, so I just paint them and shoot them uh, randomly for my patrons. And this is also the best offer for original art at the moment. And as I said in the beginning, a 30 minutes long version of this video is available on my Patreon page as well for the $5 reward here. And you also get access to all my previous videos and you can download them and keep them on your device forever. You also get a lot of progress pictures. You can vote on which content you're interested in and I'm answering as many comments as I can. I hope you liked this painting tutorial and it helped you a bit. If you do so, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video. Bye bye!